we have extreme weather conditions and extreme variances in temperature during the day. <laughs> to the channel. My name is Mitch. And I'm Scott. We're your favorite redheaded realtors and in today's video we are discussing all of the disadvantages to living in Brighton, Colorado. But wait, before we get too far into this video. Do us a huge favor if you would. Go ahead, smash that like button, hit that subscribe button. We are the go-to channel for all things living in Brighton, Brighton, Colorado and Brighton, Colorado real estate. You'll find other agents talking about the city on YouTube. You'll find other videos. What you won't find is other agents who live here, work here, sleep here, play here. Nobody does what we do. We are That's your right. go-to agents for Brighton, Colorado. So do us a huge favor, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. And if after watching any of these videos, you would like to explore moving here or buying a home here, we would love nothing more than to help you out. Feel free, give us a call or text at the number that you see on the screen. This around here somewhere, it's floating around. <laughs> that number will reach directly to us. Like I said, we'd love nothing more than to help you guys out. Now, let's dive into the video. So let's start with number five on our list of the disadvantages of living in Brighton. Brighton itself is a very car dependent city. If you work in or around the Brighton area, you must consider the fact that you're more than likely going to be driving your, your car to your place of employment. The, the issue that we have in Brighton is there's very limited public transportation. There is a bus route within the city that runs to a few stops within the city. Also access to light rail, for instance, there's no light rail within the city limits. So to get to a light rail station, you'll also be traveling either to the Denver International Airport or to Thornton for the light rail station that's located there. Alrighty, now number four on our list of the disadvantages of living in Brighton, we have extreme weather conditions and extreme variances in temperature during the day. Now, I hear people joke about it all the time. Oh, well, at least it's a dry heat. But what you don't understand about that dry heat here is that when it's 102 degrees here in Brighton, that's really hot because of the elevation, there's no atmospheric protection from that whatsoever. And to make things add icing to that cake, it can be 102 at one o'clock in the afternoon. And by 6.30, seven o'clock at night, we're back down into the 60, 70 degree range. So there are some massive, massive swings. And that's true for both summer and winter, there are most days in winter, it, it's pretty mild actually, 30s, 40s, 50 degrees even. I mean, we've even seen some Februarys where we're touching the 60 degree mark. But because of where Brighton is located out here, kind of it's definitely closer to the plains than other cities, uh, there's nothing to stop wind, there's nothing to stop cold and snow, and there's nothing to trap heat in. We don't have a bunch of big buildings reflecting light back. So. It can get extremely hot and extremely cold. Again, triple digits in the summer are quite common and below zero in the winter is also, unfortunately, a common occurrence as well. Number three, the commuting distance. Now, this doesn't sound too bad, but from Brighton to Denver is about 30 minutes. Now, that's 30 minutes without traffic. So if you're gonna be driving that every day, you're gonna add about 15 minutes to that commute each way if you're working in Denver. Now there are jobs in some of the surrounding communities, but keep in mind that this northern part of Denver is mostly bedroom communities to, to the Denver metropolitan area. Now you can take secondary roads from Brighton to some of the surrounding communities, but keep in mind that those roads also back up from time to time because of people doing the same thing. And as well as you're gonna add some time to that commute time if you're taking it to Denver. There are multiple ways to get to Denver, but other people know those as well. Now, the good thing is that if you travel for work and you take a lot of flights, downtown Brighton to Denver International Airport is only about 20 minutes from door to door. So if you do fly and travel, it's quick access to get to the airport from Brighton, Colorado. All right, now number two on our list. We, we had a fancy name, fancy title for, for this part, but really bare bones of it. There's nothing to do here in Brighton. I mean, Brighton's a small town. It's growing a lot. We've mentioned that before. We're getting really close to 50,000 residents in Brighton. But as far as things to do on a Friday night or on a weekend, 
that part of the city's growth hasn't co really caught up yet. Now, of course, there's independently owned restaurants and independently owned businesses within Brighton. There's a few things to do, movie theaters, shopping mall, stuff like that. But for the most part, you're, you're better off driving to downtown Denver or to a larger, more established city if you're looking for something specific. To go to like Top Golf, let's say, you gotta go to Thornton for that. You know, Brighton's not big enough to support that. If you wanna go, really, I mean, even mini golfing or go-kart racing, small things like that, you're gonna be driving. And that kind of ties back into that commuting distance to go anywhere, to do anything, you're gonna be spending at least 30 to 45 minutes on the road. So number two on our list, to recap, limited entertainment options and limited things to do. Alrighty, and number one, our final disadvantage of living in Brighton. So Brighton is still a growing city. Uh, approaching 50,000 people here yeah. shortly in the next year or so. Yeah. There are limited job opportunities in Brighton. Now that's not to say that you can't live and work in Brighton. Brighton consists of mainly locally owned smaller businesses being you know, small hardware stores, uh, like mom and pop restaurants yeah. and retail establishments. Now we do have a major um, employer, which is Vestas. They they do create wind turbines yep. for, and you've probably seen them all over the U.S. Yep. However, if it, there's not a lot of companies that you would recognize right. um, that that exist in Brighton. However, so one thing to consider: if you are a highly skilled worker, now you can work from home. Absolutely. That's always an op op opportunity. However, see the first part of our video yeah. if you're not. <laughs> You're going to be commuting. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you're going to commute to either Denver or a surrounding city for that employment. Now, of course, this is this point is probably more disadvantageous in the pre-COVID world. Nowadays, with most companies allowing their workers to work from home, of course, Brighton has all the necessary infrastructure for you to be able to do that without working for a company here in Brighton. So absolutely. you can live here, work here without working for somebody in Brighton. And that's great. That kind of cancels out the the bad of not a whole lot of job opportunities now that's not to say there won't be any you know we'll touch on this more in next week's video so make sure you subscribe because next week we're talking about the advantages of living in brighton but the job market is expected to grow 43 percent that is fan of the next 10 years that's astounding that that's huge growth and as the population grows the job market is going to keep up with it so as of right now there's limited job opportunities two years from now, three years from now, hell, even next year, there may be more than enough to choose from. All right, now, so to recap our list here of the top five disadvantages of living in Brighton, Colorado, number five, we had limited public transportation. Number four, we had weather extremes. Number three, we had commute distance. Number two, we had limited entertainment options. And number one, we had limited job opportunities. Now, as you continue your research about Brighton and the Brighton, Colorado area and real estate markets, we've got some other videos popping up on screen to help you out with that. And again, if you do have questions about anything we talked about or have questions about buying or selling a home here in Brighton, call us, text us. The number that's popping up right now is the best way to get a hold of us.